the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 41 through 47 on this church anniversary. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. Our focus verses today is 42 through 44 and 46. I'm going to read it out of the King James Version, but I also later on in this sermon, I'll read it at the New Living Translation. Amen. We're continuing our series entitled Uncommon. Uh, first week we did Uncommon Love. Last week we did Uncommon Manhood. And here on this day, we're going to do Uncommon Church. And you come on next week, we'll do Uncommon Family. Amen. The book of Acts chapter 2. Let me also say, you need to know, uh, uh, the woman of God, Shakara, who led the song just now, she released a project, a 16-song project this week, y'all. Come on, 16 song. Woo, I've been waiting for that. I did my download. You can download it on so many different streaming services, but you want to download it and get it in your uh, devices, if you will, and see if you can handle it because it, it's smoking. It's, she got a little bit of everything. I'm not going to tell it all. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's about her own journey, amen, 16-song journey. Uh, but I, I talked to Lady Max when I said I want her to learn how to sing that Hey Mister song. I said, you got to sing Hey Mister to me, amen. But it's, it's beautiful, beautiful. Please get her project. And again, we're just so grateful for how God uses her, amen, and uses our entire music ministry. Put your hands together for the choir, our music ministry, Brother Dennis. There's a movement that, that's going through the body of Christ that says, bring the choir back. I think y'all convinced everybody. Bring the choir back. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. If you have arrived there in your Bible, say amen. If you still look and say, wait, pastor. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. Reading from the King James Bible. My Bible reads thusly. They did then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs was done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, somebody say small groups, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Lord added to the church, such should be saved. I just want to talk from the subject, uncommon church. Everybody say uncommon church. Pray with me and stay with me. An elderly woman, an elderly woman, walked into a church. The friendly usher greeted her at the door and helped her up the flight of steps. Where would you like to sit, he asked politely. The front row, please, she answered. The front row. You really don't want to do that, the usher said. The pastor is really boring. Do you happen to know who I am? The woman inquired. No, he said. I'm the pastor's mother. She replied indignantly. Do you know who I am? He asked. No, she said. Good, he answered. <laughs> One person representing the church the bride of Christ, can influence someone with negative notions and cause them 
even to miss their blessing. Church is not a place to hurt. The church is God's family gathering to worship and to change the world for his glory. When I say to you or when you hear the word church, what do you think of? It can depend on one's background and traditions and cultural experiences, how they respond to that question. Most people's understanding about church is limited, and they are not at all what God says a church or a church family is. Do I have a witness? My brothers and sisters, why do you get out of bed and come to church? Most people go. And many don't know why they are here. Is it at a habit? Is it at a guilt, tradition? Or you feel even forced, some of the young people say. Do you come to church to find a wife or a husband? Why do you get up out of the bed in the morning? Let me tell you uh, what Rick Warren said that church is not. He said, church is not a building. Most of you observe that when people think of church, they think of a building on a specific location. I'm going to church, which means a building. But Jesus did not die for a building. Churches meet in buildings, but they are not the building. Can I say it again? Jesus did not die for a building. He died for you and for me, giving us access to the Father, and an invitation to become the sons and daughters of God. Secondly, a church is not an institution, which is a very big misconception. We often think of it, and I know I've said it before, the institutionalized church, but we know that's out there, but that is not what a church is. Listen carefully and even write this down. The church is not a place I go to nor an event I attend. It is a spiritual family that I belong to. It is a spiritual family that I belong to. And so today's text in the New Living Translation gives you some uncommon church characteristics or attributes that empower us to influence the world. Influenced the world at a time of the formation and the birthing of the church here in the book of Acts. Acts identifies in this text its purposes and focus. Let me read the text that I gave you, really verse 42, 40 to 44 and 46 in the New Living Translation. Listen closely. It says, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, unquote. Notice the words in there, believed, baptized, joined, committed, teaching, fellowship, prayer, worship, the Lord's Supper, meeting in homes like small groups. They ate together, they served, they ministered together. All these things make up the church. And according to the Bible, this verse and many others uh, here in the Bible, there's so many things that help us and give us clues what the church is. But can I give you a definition that I think is helpful? The church is a group of baptized believers who join together in a commitment to help each others fulfill God's five purposes for their lives. That's the church. If you read Purpose Driven Life, Rick Warren gives us five purposes, which I think is pretty good. I think he, he kind of nails it. He says, purpose one, uh, you will plan for God's pleasure, which is worship. Purpose two, you will form for God's family, which is fellowship. Uh, purpose three, you were created, become like Christ. Everybody say like Christ. That's discipleship. Purpose four, you were shaped for serving God. That's ministry. And purpose five, you were made for a mission. God has an assignment 
And that's missional experiences. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, the church is, if you really understand, the church is the most important group on the entire earth. The church. Uh, you, you, you become part of the human race when you were born out of your mother's womb. You, you became part of the human race. But when you become a member of God's family, you do so by being born again through faith in God. You cannot be a part of God's family. You must be born again. Now, you, 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 you came through your mother's womb and uh, water and blood was spilt, but you, 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 you were born into the human race. But when you are twice born, sanctified and filled with his spirit, you are made part of God's family. And every disciple of Jesus Christ should have an urgency to reach out to others to expand God's family. Do I have a witness up in here? Uh, there should be an urgency to witness, to share our, our testimony and, and bring people into the land of the living because they've been living in the land of the dying. And the only children of God is those who've been born again, who accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. That's the church. First uh, Peter 1 and 3 said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercies has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then verse 4, which I, I love, says to an inheritance. Everybody say inheritance. That we, we, we're not just born again, but we're born again to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, that's reserved uh, in heaven for you. Oh, I, that makes me happy by myself. I, I, I just rejoice in it. And, and so I'm not just heavenly bound, but I've recognized uh, that I, I'm a child of God and, and I have an inheritance that's in him that nobody can take away. And, and, and I don't have to always, I don't have to necessarily wait only to heaven to get it. I can receive my inheritance right now. Uh, but there's a greater reception when you cross over to the other side. Uh, you get your rewards and your crown. Lord, have mercy. Uh, I don't know about you, but I want my crown to be pumping. I want it to be slain in that crown. I want, I want it to be right in my crown. In 1 Timothy 3 uh, in 15 talks about the attitude and how we should be looking and says, but if I tarry long that thou may have know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. And so there's a way to behave in the house of God. There's a, a way to conduct ourselves. There's an expectation we should have as the church to influence the world. We can't, uh, we are in the world, but we're not of the world, but we can't, we got to stop acting like the world. We need to act like the children of God. We need to walk like it. And I'm not talking about a performance, perfunctory work. I'm talking about an internal transformation of mind and spirit where you walk differently. You talk differently. Uh, you love differently. You, uh, you give differently. You have a different type of attitude. That's the church. And so the church is the most important group on the earth. And somebody may ask, why is the church the most important group. Can I give you a few things? I'm going I'm to blow through this, so hold on. The one, one reason it is the church is God's family. The church is God's family. The second reason is it is the only reason God created the universe. Because he wanted the family. God wanted a family. Ephesians 1, 4, and 5 says, according as he has chosen us in him, listen, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to his good pleasure and his will. It was God's good pleasure to bring you into his church. It, 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 it was God's good pleasure uh, to hunt you down, let the, the hounds of heaven hunt you down and to bring you uh, and choose you and redeem you before the foundation of the world. He knew you would be saved. 
that ought to make you happy by itself. I don't deserve it and you don't deserve it. You haven't done something uh, so good and I haven't lived so perfectly for God to do it. But by his grace and mercy and his love and his compassion, uh, he, uh, he brings us into a redemption experience. Uh, the third reason why the church is the impo most important group is God is using his church for his eternal purposes. No church, really no universe. No church, no time, no plan. God uses his church for his eternal purposes. Uh, I think a big, another reason, it's a big reason, uh, why it's the most important place in the, in the, in the earth. Because Jesus died for his church. He didn't die for the nation. Uh, he didn't just die for America and our civil religion. He didn't just die for the, every nation. He died for his church. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, the other thing I believe that's worth saying about why the church is the most important group in the earth is it's the only thing on earth that will last forever, which includes the word of God. Amen. Right? All eternity and time. You can read Ephesians 3.21 and 1 Thessalonians 4.17. It tells us, in eternity, his church will reign with the Father. And Revelation goes and tells us that all the nations of the world and every tongue will be at his throne. Lord Jesus. And the question is, will you be there yourself? Are you a member of the church or are you just a member of a religious action or institution? Are you part of the church, the ecclesia, the place of transformation? Or do you come in here and just get your dose of guilt stops and your dose of worship and then leave out and act the same way? No, the church is called to influence the whole world and impact the world for Jesus Christ. We are called to be change agents. Anybody believe that you're called to change to be a change agent? And so if you go to church every Sunday and witness to nobody, nobody in your family, nobody, uh, something is wrong. We've got to mature to a place where we know when we come under those doors uh, into the sanctuary to worship God in the beauty of holiness, that we have a made up mind and we operate from victory, Lord Jesus, uh, that we belong to him and we will last forever. We will come and judge the world with our chief judge, Jesus Christ, the church. Another reason the church is the only group Jesus said would succeed. Jesus is in the church building business. Whew, somebody, somebody asked me when I said this to them, they said, well, why all these churches are closing? Because they're not handling God's business. <laughs> if you handle God's business, God will handle your business. Right? Every church is not a healthy church. Right? There are people that like the Spirit of God said the, the enemy come and masquerades or masquerosos. He masquerades a, as an angel of life. He's like a wolf in sheep clothing. And there are people who are building buildings and inviting people in but are not, don't have sound doctrine, don't teach the teachings of the apostles, don't rightly divide the word. Uh, they, they're pimping in the pulpit, playing games with the word of God. And oh God, I wouldn't want to be them because it's better. This, Jesus says be, you better be like a, a, a man with a, a chain around his neck thrown into the water uh, we, we, we got to be careful of what church we walk in and, and a church means we're accountable to one another from the pastor to the door somebody say accountability transparency oh just like Jesus transparency open oh beloved the church is not like the world the world is common the church is uncommon anybody know what I'm talking about have you seen what I call common influence, the way the world works and functions? The world is self-centered, filled with self-aggrandizement. Mm -hmm. The world is more interested in uh, protecting itself. I must protect myself. I must benefit from something. I must control everything. I must win. Uh, I'm about making sure I win by any means necessary. That's not the church. That's the world. The world focuses on the realities, and these are real realities, what I call people problems. We know that people disappoint. Yes, they will. Jesus said, why did you doubt me? I'm sure he was disappointed in Matthew 14. People make mistakes. Yes, they will. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. All right. People are selfish. Yes, we can be. 
Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Mm -hmm. People might betray. Yes, they have. Uh, he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know this man who you're talking about. People betrayed you like Peter. Those are realities in the world, but that should not make you become like the world. Wounds are real. People are real. People are imperfect. But as a believer, we should be more interested in impacting all of us imperfect people and all the other imperfect people for the glory of God. We should be interested in winning them and loving them and impacting them and be all of us becoming like Christ. We cannot let one person uh, stop me, you, from coming to church. Don't you know the enemy will assign you somebody right in the church to scare you out of the church? Because we, we, are, we are frail and have uh, issues. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. We got issues. We got issues. But because you got to know who you are and who you belong to. And when you are sure about who you are, uh, you begin to understand why we assemble here every time. I know we got internet and all that's pretty good, but that's not sufficient enough because we come because iron sharpens iron. We come because when we gather together, there's power that downloads straight from heaven. We come because we have an expectation to meet him here and that we can go to the altar and the fire will fall from heaven and cleanse us and transform us. We come because we hungry for everything that God's come. we're hungry anybody came here for a word I came here hung. I, I, I'm preaching but I'm still hungry I, I came to meet him because when I meet him I become more like him and when I become more like him I learn to love like him Ooh, I want to love like Jesus I want to love like Jesus Ch church an uncommon church has an uncommon influence. It's a different thinking. Just touch your brain and say it's a different thinking. I got to get my, my thinking, my stinking thinking, sometimes messing up how I view what church is. The devil has lied to us about churches. You got to know why you come to church. Because if you really understood the church, you would be running from house to house, gathering up your family, your friends, people you know, and say, I know you may not understand, but you need to come with the church with me so your life can be changed, so you truly can be helped. They can't help you in that world and they can't help you with all these philosophies you need to come and get the word of God to equip you and empower you and transform you you will stay where you are till you come for a change and if the people of God don't is don't want to bring people to church something's wrong with our understanding of the church oh I'm trying to preach I'm trying to help you I'm trying to help you I'm trying to help you something's wrong we had different thinking. Matthew 16 and 18 says, Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my, my church. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. John 21 and 17 says, a, a time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked that question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, that, then feed my sheep. I call that church. Feed the sheep to understand that on the revelation that Jesus Christ is the Lord that God revealed to Peter right there he said flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you uh, but my spirit revealed it to you the father revealed it to you and we got to build on the revelation that he Jesus is the chief cornerstone Lord have mercy and foundation the rock in the weary land Jesus is that all of that and so my influence listen it's not like the world. My influence and your influence is not determined by my or your individual success, but my influence uh, is determined by my ability to help others succeed and become like Christ. Did you hear what I just said? Right, right. So there's a different focus. Uh, the world focused on all those things I gave you already. They, they self-focus, protecting themselves and benefiting themselves and controlling them and uh, getting control of everything and winning, winning, winning. The world teaches winning. Step on anybody to win. Uh, be like a, a, a crab going up or out of a bow. Snatch somebody down. That's the world thinking. But an uncommon church and an uncommon believer don't act like that. We focus on the person. 
And we be thankful and grateful along the way. Philippians 2, uh, 3 and 4 says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out from your own interest. Don't look out for your own interest, but take an interest in others. There's an other-centeredness versus a self-centeredness. And the world keeps putting and the culture keeps sending you the message to be self-centered. But to be an uncommon church and an uncommon believer is to focus on the people and be thankful and grateful along the way. Uh, another, way another attitude is folk, be focused on the positive and be thankful and grateful along the way. Ephesians 4.32 said, instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Ooh, I wish couples practiced that. I, I wish uh, men and women practiced that. I wish church members being kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. God forgave you and me. We should pay that forward. When that person get on your last nerve and you look like you want to cuss, you better stop now, honey. You, you better look and remember that God forgave you and you. Oh, God, you remember the nasty things you did. You remember the foolish things you did. But God's grace and mercy covers you day and night. G -g 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 the, the blood of Jesus keeps you uh, because he wants you to be more like him. And so you can't be focusing on negative. Focus on the positive. And, and then maybe focus on potential. Uh, I think Reverend Lee and a couple other of my friends, when we talk and they share, and they say, you always, you know, uh, kind of like supporting, got this positive view of people, even if I point out things negative. Because part of being an uncommon believer for an uncommon church is to focus on potential. Mm -mm. I'm so glad that the church, while I was even a sinner, there was a believer who saw my potential when I couldn't see it myself. When I was blind in darkness and sin, that chaplain Azar came into me and spoke life, said, do you know who you are? And I was like, who am I? <laughs> I'm Melvin Maxwell. What do you mean? Get out of my face. I was Brooklynizing him, but he stayed flat footed, said, do you know who you are and who you should belong to? Because potential, and in 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Uh, I may not have arrived today, but in God's view, he sees me way over here in my maturation. I saw myself on the street carrying guns and running around the street uh, but, but God sees me as a pastor at each friendship way before I arrived here you may see me this way and I'm not all I should be in the church uh, I don't have the right language I still got a bad attitude uh, but I'm immature but God doesn't see me the way you see me God sees me uh, walking in the spirit uh, imparting revelation God sees and so when we look at our young people we got to stop thinking about their problems or even our mature people we got to see what God sees there's potential in every one of us as long there is breath in your body there's potential to become like Jesus if you just accept Jesus and so I like to speak to potential you're becoming it's an ontological word it's an essence of being and becoming I like oh, you y'all y'all going around talking about first lady uh, Michelle Obama got a book about becoming you're not really understanding the ontological question She's saying, I never arrived. She gives you a picture of her process that God used to bring her to a place and she, God's not finished with her yet. Because all of us are becoming. And if you only stop and you judge a person based on what they did today and you don't see no other potential, then you don't, you're not eligible to really be in an uncommon church. 
We've got to see what God sees. I always say, God, I don't know what you see, but I can believe this. That person may be the bishop. We may be putting them out, climbing them out. They didn't smell good when they came to church. Their clothes were tattered and all torn. They came out homeless. But you don't know when they are converted, when they accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, that very person that you've been talking about may be the bishop that will win millions of souls to Jesus Christ. You don't know who you're dealing with. Be careful how you entertain strangers. You may be entertaining angels unaware. Be careful how you handle God's God's people. There's potential. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I had a mother that always spoke potential into me. Even after I disappointed her. When I got arrested as a 13-year-old in the jail, sitting in the jail, and mama come up there with her aunt, your mama, scarf on, I scarf on, I tell you about it, and they tried to open up the door, I grabbed the door and said, keep the door closed. <laughs> you see, you don't know my mama. My mama was a tomboy. My mama had five boys, and she didn't just talk to us. She punched us in our chest. Kapoom! Didn't I say, shut up? She picked me up and flipped me over her back and put a foot on my neck and said, I bet you better not go out there and steal another thing. You, you have to deal with me. I had, I had Holy Ghost fear, my mama. But every day, going to school, she would stop at the door. And she said, young man, you got greatness in you. There's something going to happen in your life. And you got to walk in your greatness. I expect you to change the world. She would speak revelation unto me. I didn't know what she was doing until it caught up with me. Grace caught up with me. Anybody know that grace caught up with you? It caught up with me in the midnight hour. It caught up me when a man of God gave me the word of God, rightly divide the word of God, and the spirit of the Lord came into my life and transformed my mind. There's hope for all of us. Speak to the potential. Not only that, focus on their, their potential, their positivity. Focus on their purpose. Be thankful and grateful along the way. As you focus on their potential, focus on their purpose. Ephesians 2 and 10, New Living Translation. So we are God's, I love this, masterpieces. You don't make a masterpiece in one night. You don't make a masterpiece in one day, one year. A masterpiece takes time to make. And it goes on and said, he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the things he planned for us all along or even long ago. God made plans for every one of us in this sanctuary long ago. He's just trying to get us on purpose. Uh -huh. Focus on their purpose and focus sometimes on their process. Uncommon churches focus on people's potential, their positivity. You focus on their purpose. You focus on their process. But be thankful and grateful along the way because you have a process too. Luke 6 and 8 in the New Living Translation says, Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into a lap. That whole text is about a process. It returns and keeps coming back around, making more room, and it returns, keep making more room, and it returns, and keep, and keep making more room, it returns, because you are in a process of development. And so you got to be concerned about the process. Don't be afraid of process. Tell your neighbor, don't be afraid of the process. Sometimes process hurts. It's not easy, but God wants you to focus on other people's process. Just don't be so judgmental. Don't be so uh, uh, sifting and, and measuring. They're in a process. You went through a process. It took me 30 years just to get here. I got 30 years, 40, 50. I don't know how many more, but I still got, I'm still in the midst of my process. I can't park the car yet. I'm just trying to get there. Anybody on a destination? Trying to get there with the Lord. Lord, have your way. Work out my process. Uh, along the way, I want to be thankful and grateful for the process that you're putting me through. And so if I'm in the process, I better treat people as if they're in the process and trust and pray for them that the Lord get their minds and hearts stayed on him and that God will work together for their good. And in the end, I just got to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got to pray for them. I got to lay hands on them. And I've got to believe when they don't believe. I got to hope 
hope when they don't hope. I got to expect when they don't expect. But I got to believe that the process will work together for God's glory. I'm ready to close now. Focus not only on their positivity, their potential, their purpose, but an uncommon church also focus on the passion. The passion of Jesus. Jesus, God, comes down 40 and two generations. He didn't have to, but he came. He didn't struggle. He just came into the womb of Mary, Lord Jesus. Walks to earth 33 years, healing the sick, raising the dead, showing us how to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother, comforting people, hugging on people, loving the children, and letting us know, suffer the children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God, that we all have to come to him like children, humble-hearted, uh, with a, a hope in us, and Jesus' passion as he moved to Golgotha's hill uh, over the Via Della Rosa, carrying a cross, Jesus took all the stripes and hurts and whips and nails for your sins and for my sins. Jesus' passion. I don't deserve such goodness, but he loved me while I was yet a sinner. And every nail banged into his hands. Every nail banged into his feet. And the spear in his side was for my sins and for your sins. Focus on the passion. I'm who I am because Jesus died for my sins. I'm who I am because he loved me when I didn't know nobody else. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving me so much. Thank you. I focus on the passion. When people ain't being right to me, I plead the blood. The blood, Satan, the blood is against you. I plead the blood because the blood still works. The passion, the blood has power. The blood reaches every mountain and flows to every valley. I plead the blood over the sick. I plead the blood over the hater. I plead the blood over Donald Trump. I plead the blood over the white. Everybody needs to focus on the passion because the blood of Jesus uh, can take away the stain and the stench of sin what can wash away my sins what can make me whole again oh beloved as you prepare to leave here somebody here needs to remember all that God has done one of my favorite preachers Bishop Millicent Hunter she said we all need to have a fast a flashback praise. Woo! You see, testimonies of what God did to you is connected to flashbacks. Flashbacks are connected to praise. And every now and then, then God wants you to take a, a look back and see how God blessed you. Every now and then, you ought to rehearse in your spirit. I wish I had 10 people in here willing to testify. I was sick and I couldn't get well. The prognosis was bad, but God healed me. The devil's mess did not work. The job folded and the company relocated. My bills were overdue, but I never missed a payment on meal. So that did not work. My relationship soured. I thought I'd never laugh again. Now I find myself laughing all the time. Yeah, y'all talking to me now. We need a flashback praise. We're getting ready to make some noise in here. We need a flashback praise. I was sinking deep in sin far from the, what? Peaceful shore. Wow, oh, that's a flashback praise. I didn't know who God was. I was in the darkness, but God delivered me. That's a flashback praise. Some of y'all who never been through nothing can sit there with your arms folded. Some of y'all who never been through nothing can keep your mouth shut. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God 
for saving me. Thank God for the saints. Thank God for the church. Thank God for restoration. Thank God for all the prayers. Thank God for the joy. Thank God for the friends. Thank God for Jesus. I'm thankful and I'm going to praise him from a flashback and a flash forward because God's about to do something special in your life and you ought to give him a flash forward praise. Oh, I'm going to praise God for what he's about to do. Thank you, God, for those songs you're giving me. Thank you, God, for the blessings in my bank. Thank you, God, for people being saved. Thank you for salvation that's coming to my cousins, coming to my brother, coming to my... Some of these things, Darlene, happens because God wants to save some of the family. Salvation is coming. I thank him fast forward and flash back. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for me amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me i once was lost but now i'm found i was blind oh god oh god now i see oh thank you lord i am part of the uncommon church the church in the world but not of the world but a sign to the world to change the world thank you Lord for the privilege woo, for being in God's family no longer on the outside no longer in the margins I am part of the biggest family on the earth. The church of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the things you're doing. When I flash back, you've done so many miracles. I can't even count it. Thank you. I don't have enough tongues to count yeah. the blessings of the name of one by yeah. one. Yeah. And when I flash forward in expectation and anticipation, yes. I know you are, you're doing a work right now, even while we're preaching and teaching. Yes, God. So, Thank God, you. we as the uncommon church Thank you. hold fast of who we are after 66 years yes. at each friendship has been there. We thank you for yes, Reverend God. Wright. We thank you for Reverend Green. Yes. We thank you, God, for Reverend Bennett. We thank you yes. for Reverend Coleman. Protect Pastor Coleman, God, yes. as he speaks truth to power throughout the world. <laughs> Father, protect us all. We thank you for all these great leaders. Thank you. He invaded and fatted. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. So many people who come way before us and those who are still here working. Thank you for our deacon emeritus of this church right now. Thank you. Who's still praying for us. We pray for him. So Father, we pray, God, that you would have your way with all of our leaders, all of our members. Many who not coming, many who not sure why they should come. But if they only knew, God, who the church is and who is the church, I pray, God, that you would dispatch your angels for those who are not in any church and allow them to return until we send them to where they need to be. In the matchless, loving name of Jesus. Everybody that got two hands, give God some praise. I just want you to know you, you got potential. You got purpose. You got purpose. Yeah. You're here today. And you don't Thank have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to know he loves you. Life ain't perfect. It's no crystal stand. Come on. But he didn't promise you not that you would never have any difficulties. But what he did promise that he'll never leave you or forsake yes. you. Yes. That he'll go through the mountains with you and he Thank will you. go through the valley with you. Thank you. And you don't want to do life on your own terms, but you want to do life on the purposes of God that's been set apart for your life. I invite you, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, this is your moment. God so loved the world. Yes. That he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever, that's where you and me are, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have 
eternal, everlasting life. Amen. God loves you. Thank God. And we invite you. Thank God. Christ. Maybe you're already saved. You have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And you're still trying to find a family. God's church is bigger than East Friendship. There's so many great churches, McLean and all the other ones that I fellowship with. But you're still looking. God has a church for you. Maybe this place, a church that's imperfect, but that serves a perfect God. That has a perfect will and perfect destiny for your life. We want to invite you. We're going to play a little song right now. And as this song is played...